Georgia Tech. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Stephen Norris with Georgia Tech. How do you hear me? Hey, Stephen, this is Shane and Aki. We have you loud and clear. Fantastic. It's, it's, it's an honor to uh, join you guys on such a special day. Uh, of course, uh, May the 4th. Couldn't be more appropriate to talk uh, with two astronauts at the International Space Station. So I have to start with a May the 4th be with you. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. We got a lot of nice uh, jokes on that uh, from Mission Control team today this morning when we woke up. So it was pretty cool to see all their jokes. They, they definitely outdid us. You, uh, you know what's what's so exciting to uh, to be able to talk uh, with you both today is uh, just taking in consideration the the energy around space exploration right now and uh, at, at the same time you guys are are up at the International Space Station we've got uh, the Perseverance rover that has launched uh, a, a a helicopter to explore Mars I, I, I'm guessing. It's an exciting time to be uh, up in space, and I'm wondering what keeps you excited about, about these missions. Well, like you said, it's very busy in the space business right now, and for us here at NASA and JAXA and ESA and uh, the Russians and the Canadians as well, it's, it's an exciting time for all of us to get more people involved in space. And so um, it's all, we're, we're glad to be a small part of this um, whole thing, but it certainly is a, a new wave coming and a great you know, next decade or so in space exploration. You've, you've both served as commander of, of the space station, uh, Shane, Shane previously and, and Aki, uh, Aki now. So, uh, you know, for, uh, for those of us that don't know, what does that role entail and, and, and what's the toughest part of being commander of, of, of ISS? Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, as a commander, uh, your first priority is safety, safety of the crew, safety of the vehicle, and then the mission. So uh, every day we're chatting around the table, you know, making sure that everyone's in a good shape and uh, we know our mission. And if someone is uh, you know, having trouble, we'll all help out with each other. And the other um, uh, responsibility for the commander is uh, to communicate with the ground team as well. Uh, for long-term uh, planning and uh, any issues that come up, uh, they'll talk to us and we can uh, chime in and uh, give them our feedback as well. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have Shane here because uh, every uh, once in a while I'll, I'll ask him, hey, what did you do uh, during your mission? And he can give me his, uh, his thoughts on uh, being a commander. Yeah, did you, did you have any advice for Aki, Shane, since you've, you've already sort of stepped into this role as commander? Yeah, we've, like he said, we chat quite a bit. Uh, biggest advice is just, you know, we have an incredible team up here. The crew on board is amazing. The ground teams are amazing. Keep that communication going that Aki talked about with the with our crew and the ground teams. Make sure we're in sync. That's a big thing. And, uh, and for me, when I was up here with my incredible crew, which some of them were up here again, I just tried to stay out of their way because they were <laughs> super talented and I just needed to make sure that they were well fed and well rested and uh, just let them go. You know this this mission sounds like it's truly an international effort, and and uh, there's a lot of exciting things that you'll be doing, including uh, installing a new robotic arm. How are you guys preparing for some of these specific parts of the mission that we'll see you'll be working on uh, a little bit a little bit later? Yeah, our Russian colleagues are getting excited about getting a new module on the space station here, hopefully this summer, and uh, as part of that, installing that new robotic arm you were talking about. And so that'll all be done on the Russian side. Um, Thomas Pesquet, a French astronaut who's up here with us, will do some of the checkouts on the robotic arm because it's a European robotic arm. Um, so that'll be cool to be part of that. Um, Aki and I and Tama and Mark Vandehei, we're going to do some spacewalks on our side coming up. And uh, they're dealing with the new solar arrays that are going to come up on SpaceX 22. So I'm um, really excited about this new technology that we'll be able to put a new solar array um, out there. That'll It's smaller, of course, but it produces more you know, power than, than the old ones do. So like everything these days. So that'll be really exciting for all of us. You've both been on previous missions, uh, you know, where um, partners like SpaceX weren't involved. And I'm... Uh, I'm interested in hearing what are some of the differences now that we've taken this sort of new step in, in traveling to space uh, with partners like SpaceX. 
I'll start and let Aki add some stuff as well. But, you know, the biggest thing for our nation really is we have the capability to launch out of the U.S. again. So that hasn't happened in almost a decade after the shuttle ended. So for us, that's a great capability, um, whether it's private or government. This is the first time, obviously, that we're, that we're using private resources to um, fly U.S. astronauts and JAXA and ESA astronauts to space. And so that's pretty special um, in itself. And SpaceX, you know, we train obviously out there in Hawthorne, California, where they're headquartered and based. And that's a really neat experience to be out there. And, you know, in one building, they have the training and they have every piece of the rocket being made and built is right there underneath you. So it's pretty special to be in one location to see all that action going on. And for me, I think the uh, the biggest uh, eye opener uh, for me was uh, the uh, the way they think. Um, they can, you know, uh, all the space agency kind of think alike and uh, think about the design and safety and and the uh, operation concept. Uh, they were thinking out out of that box. So new uh, concepts, new design, um, and uh, I think that's uh, the way to go for the future. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a geography nerd, and uh, one of my favorite things about following uh, Shane's Twitter feed is seeing all these amazing views of different nations and countries that we get to see from space. I thought the, the picture of the Mozambique coastline was, was really cool. Uh, I remember the last time you were up in space, you sent us a really fantastic image of, of Atlanta. Uh, wondering, are there any photos that you haven't taken yet that you're trying to, uh, trying to capture? Yeah, um, I've started uh, this past weekend. We had some free time, so I took a lot of really great pictures. It turned out to be great, so um, you'll look forward to seeing those down here in the future. But um, I'm I'm kind of a golf um, person. Golf kind of is one of the sports I love, so I'm trying to take some uh, of the really famous golf course pictures from around the world, which are very challenging to get, by the way. Haven't got any this trip yet, but I'm going to be uh, really focusing in on that here the next few months to try to get some of my favorite courses. Aki, a question for you from one of our students since Japan is preparing to host the Olympics. Um, and, and really, for this question, for, for both of you, if you weren't an astronaut, which Olympic event would you be competing in? I think Shane just answered his, uh, <laughs> his uh, special sport. Um, for me, I guess, um, I was in the uh, swimming team uh, when uh, I was in uh, junior high school, high school, so I'm probably uh, on the swim team, uh, but I was also uh, played rugby football in uh, college, so maybe those two sports. Yep, and baseball was probably my the sport I was best at, even though I loved other ones as well, um, so that might be one that I do. Um, and now that golf's an Olympic sport, um, I certainly would. I don't have the talent to do that, but I would love to do that. I see, I see the white and gold behind you, Shane, and it's, it's commencement week here at Georgia Tech. And I would be remiss if I did not ask for a special, uh, a special message from the International Space Station for uh, all of our Yellow Jackets graduating this week. Yeah, special congratulations to them from the International Space Station. Um, it's quite a feat. They're just really starting their, their lives, believe it or not. It's been a tough road at Georgia Tech, as, as most engineering schools are. Tech is no, no different. Um, and I just wish them all the best. I hope they're really going to go apply themselves, everything they've learned at Georgia Tech, uh, and go be a positive influence for society. Um, no matter if they're from the U.S. or another country, they can all go be a positive influence on their communities. So, uh, again, congratulations from the space station, and we wish you all well. For, for Aki and Shane, thank you so much for taking the time today. It's an honor to be able to talk to you from space. I'm amazed that we're doing this over Skype. Uh, best of luck to you, and we can't wait to connect with you when you get back home. Awesome. Looking forward to, to visiting Tech again uh, once I get back home. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Georgia Tech portion of the event. Thank you to all participants from Georgia Tech. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.